We have just had one of the craziest days in Fortnite history. We have the first day of qualifiers for the $4 million land. Insane teams popping off out of nowhere. Some of the biggest names in the business struggling. But we have to talk about what happened to Bucky getting disqualified the day of qualifier one. Not only that, after being disqualified, he was given less than three hours to leave the country and was on a plane heading back to the United States. It is a ridiculous situation. Obviously, everyone's freaking out. And I do my best to cover exactly what happen before we talk about what went down in the actual games later in the video. So the timeline is a little bit weird on this one. The news broke from Bucky himself tweeting out basically a whole bunch of tweets around the fact that he was disqualified from the event and he was being escorted home. He did tweets from the car on the way home. He then did a live stream from the airport where he actually seemed incredibly upset despite all the jokes throughout the tweets that he was making. The short of it is basically he was disqualified by Blast themselves. He was saying that this information wasn't coming from Epic Games because Epic Games has hired Blast as the company to run the tournament tournament. They run the broadcast. They organize all the players, all of that. So he was saying that someone at Blast has told him he's disqualified and he has to leave the country, but he was never told why he was disqualified or what happened around this situation. A lot of people were saying he got deported. As far as I can see, he wasn't deported. That would be a much bigger legal issue. That means it would be the actual government themselves kicking him out of Denmark. And that would have a whole bunch of legal ramifications and cause a bunch of issues for Bucky traveling in the future. I'm pretty sure it was just the company running the event blast, were kicking him out of the event, and for whatever reason, were demanding he had to go home. Whether that's because he had some kind of visa with them, it's very hard to get to the bottom of this situation. There was three main theories as to why Bucky was disqualified. Firstly, came from him himself on Twitter. He was talking about how he changed the digital vibrancy of the game PC that he'll be playing on in the tournament. Digital vibrancy doesn't really do anything. It's just a setting on the PC that makes your game more vibrant. It just changes the colors. Bucky's used to playing with it. He turned it on. He ended up DMing a Blast employee saying, hey, I didn't realize I wasn't supposed to do this. I've now changed it. Can you reset it? I don't want to get in trouble. So a lot of people are assuming that wasn't the reason because it looks like they got it sorted. The second reason was the fact that people thought that Bucky was maybe making potentially inappropriate comments about a Blast employee. If you ever watch Bucky's streams, you know he sometimes makes a lot of jokes, especially around women that would be deemed to be inappropriate. A lot of people thinking potentially Blast took offense to this and that's why he would be disqualified. The final theory was due to a DM that was going around saying that Bucky had been disqualified because they found tobacco in his keyboard and he was in the possession of alcohol. Now I've actually reached out to Bucky himself who said that this DM is fake. He actually said this DM is not real. He doesn't know why someone made this DM or shared it and doesn't think that is the reason why he was disqualified. Now, again, Bucky has been known to smoke at his setup back home. He was streaming himself having some drinks, but again, he can legally drink in Denmark. I think it's just rules around smoking indoors or smoking at the arena and also bringing alcohol to the arena. Bucky said he was never searched. They never proved he had alcohol. He didn't have alcohol on him at the event. So that one kind of rules that out and now we have even more questions than answers but don't worry we did get an official statement from Bucky saying that he got informed that he was banned for subsection 8 of the official code of conduct you would think with Bucky tweeting out the official reason why he got banned that would be it done and dust and I've wasted your time for the last few minutes I could have just said why he got banned but if you look at subsection 8 of the rules it is huge there is so many different things Bucky could have got disqualified here there's issues around competitive integrity collusion or teaming there's just playing out of fairness with the game there's toxic behavior which could be anything that could be smack talking other players that could be anything that any of the players usually do there is also wagering in here there is issues around just even what you wear on the stage the dress code illegal conduct harassment so we honestly don't really know what is going on with this rule set again some people now pointing out that if it was the tobacco thing if it was potentially you know bucky smoking in a private area that is illegal in denmark so maybe it is 8.6 which is the illegal conduct of smoking in private areas maybe Bucky was caught smoking at the venue I don't actually know what is going on with these rules and we now have even more questions than answers and it always comes back to the same point whenever I talk about these epic needs to give much more clear statements about what is happening in these situations any other esport if a player of Bucky's size or basically anyone gets banned or disqualified at a major event a four million dollar land there will be some kind of official statement as to exactly why they were
were banned because then we have, you know, potentially fake DMs leaking and going around. There's rumors spreading, people saying a bunch of stuff that didn't happen. And it just causes more damage than good. You just need to come out and say why you disqualified a player, what's happening and how it's going to change in the future. So the players know, the community knows, and we can all move forward with it. We're just left confused. And now it's just a bunch of people trying to make rumors or talking about why they think Bucky got disqualified. And we don't actually really know. This doubles back to what's going on with Jace and Repulse, the OCE team that was originally disqualified before the tournament began. There's a whole bunch of rumors circulating about Repulse didn't even qualify, account sharing, cheating, a whole bunch of stuff going around. We never got official statement until randomly Jace and Repulse got disqualified the day before the tournament. They were never told why they were disqualified and now a lot of people thinking it might be the same thing. If it's the smoking and drinking, Jace and Repulse were very, you know, open on social media about them going out and partying. They posted most multiple photos of them smoking was that now seen as inside the venue and that's why they're disqualified it is just so many questions and i'm so sorry i don't have the answers but i want to at least give you the whole situation so maybe you can try and figure out what happened for yourself i honestly don't know what is going on anymore now we've covered all that let's jump into talking about how the actual games went because we had qualifier one day one of the four million dollar land event the biggest tournament since world cup this is the top 50 teams playing in day one from regular fncs the top 25 of them go straight through to grand finals the bottom 25 get to play again tomorrow or today by the time you watch this video against the other 25 teams who called through last chance major so teams like clicks teams like mr savage teams like centered they didn't get to play day one if you don't hear me talking about them, it's because they weren't here. So we had a very massive day of games. They were super, super stacked. And it was very interesting to see how the top of the leaderboard played out. We had Cold and Acorn NA coming out on top in a tournament that almost everyone expected EU would be dominating. They didn't just win it. They won it by 74 points. They played incredible. It was only five matches played. They got a five Elim six, four Elim second, seven Elim win, eight Elim fifth. And then their last game, they got a six Elim 34th. Now, remember... Not only that, Cold and Acorn are currently getting contested by Vico and Pink, and they still managed to play this extremely well. It was super impressive. Not only did they win the tournament, they also managed to make Vico and Pink not get top 25. So there's still a hope for them that they won't qualify tomorrow in day two, and they'll get to play finals uncontested. Now, second place, we had a complete no-brainer again. Almost everyone picked them to win the tournament, Queasy and Veno. They did have a bit of drama last season. They didn't make FNCS grand finals. They switched their drops, spots up i started hearing people talk about rumors of them being washed they're not good anymore they're not gonna place queasy said in their interview after winning game one they came out the gate winning game one like they always do queasy said basically yeah we've been practicing we've been keeping all of our strategy secret everyone's been sleeping on us because we haven't been showing why we're so good deliberately so they're already qualified through let's see if they can pull it off in the finals we had reed and rituals in third place again another team where maybe they weren't on the top of your list reed and rituals have been looking incredible this has to put it that this pretty much has to put to rest any accusations of Reed being suspicious around his gameplay he is now consistently dominating at LAN they were actually in first place after the first two games they fell off a little bit towards the middle then brought it back with a five elim six but either way they played fantastic Iomzu and Rise in fourth place so we have three NA teams in the top four almost no one would have predicted that they are three of the best NA teams they were playing absolutely fantastic and then Kami and Seti in fifth to round out the top five so two eu three na in the top five we actually didn't have a single small region team win a game today all five wins were to eu or na but i got to give a huge shout out to my home region alex and worthy the power boys coming in sixth place that is an insane performance and i know it's going to surprise a lot of people the oc fans will not be surprised they know how good alex and worthy is this is worthy's first ever land event he has been one of the all-time goats out of oce but just just missed out on last two land events now finally going to show what he can do and a sixth place was incredible their worst placement was an 11th place they were such a consistent team on the day looking really really strong going into it now we have a whole bunch of other teams if i go down the list i'm not going to be able to go through all of the 25 there is a bunch of big names in here you have muzz still pop off you had bart 
Baka and Paz qualify out of their split against Tini and Misha, one of the only teams that were contested to both still double qual. We had Thomas HD and Malibuka pulling it off out of the racetrack, beating out Kanata and Ages who were not able to qualify. Kanata Ages only made it off spawn two games out of the five, Malibuka and Thomas making the other three, but in the two games they made it off spawn, they went on to get headshot sniped in both of them and unfortunately underperformed. So they're going to have to play in the qualifiers. I know Thomas and Malibuka praying they somehow don't qualify and they'll be unconned in the finals but Kanata ages with uncontested racetrack they are going to get top 25 we had threats and Buga who were struggling throughout the entire day I think they were like 30th place or 35th place going into the last game and they clutched up a nine elim second so we almost had it where potentially we would have a land final without Buga he would have been able to play the qualifiers the next day but luckily they got it done on gate on day one played fantastically well we had Blaha and Mixon pull it off as well Misha Tini like I mentioned I drop and Mappy just sneaking by in the top 25 but that obviously leaves some massive names like I said Vico Pink didn't make it we had no Rapid and Batman Booga Ages and Kanata already mentioned Podesai and Snazy we had Dukes and Edgy right at the bottom we had some really really big teams not make it through but again all of them still get the chance to play in the day two qualifiers now, the big question, what does this mean now for teams going into day two, like Clicks and Epic Whale? Obviously, these teams that qualify, their drop spots are up for grabs, but other teams that a lot of people thought would qualify now struggling means the drop map is looking super interesting. So, Mega City, for example, Clicks and Epic Whale's native home where they were planning on dropping, only one team out of the three going there in day one actually qualified, Grip A and Flixie, which means now Clicks and Epic Whale are dropping into a quadruple contested drop spot, one of which the team is dropping directly on them, Yuma and Jamon. They're the Asia last chance major qualifier. Clicks and Epic Whale, despite this, say, hey, we still lack our chances. We can still get a top 25 while being contested. We are happy to be contested on spawn with two other teams right next door to them. If you've been watching NA, Clicks and Epic Whale have been having some issues getting fought by Batman, Booga, and Rapid on spawn at Mega City in Cash Cups and other tournaments. So now on the biggest stage, only five games, it is incredibly scary for Clicks fans going into this. And if you're a fan of the big names, Mr. Savage and Badil aren't in much better spot either. Suns and Anon, who unfortunately did underperform day one, uncontested Naughty Nets, they really couldn't pull it together. They haven't qualified and they are now going to be contesting Mr. Savage and Badil. So they are now being contested on one of the worst spots on the map. It is just so far away at Naughty Nets and they have to pull it together getting a top 25. So you've got to assume they have to make every game count they can make it off spawn or we potentially will have an FNCS Grand Final for four million dollars with no mr savage and no clicks we'll have to see how they pull through other big names centered and polarized are now taking the yomzo and rise split things looking great for them of course yomzo and rise qualified centered and polarized happy to take that loot uncontested for and, and moneymaker now trying to go to the drop spot that alex and worthy also had so much success from vortex and belusi taking over taste and mustache spot as they've qualified quanti and tk taking over trulex and chicho spot on the south side of slappy we got a lot of big Big names moving around their drops. Death and Tahi are going to have a rough, a more rough time because Sneezy and Podicide, the Frenchies, weren't able to qualify out of Shattered Slabs. So Death and Tahi are going to have to be dropping into them. Neither Dukes, Edgy, or Ping and Kyrie qualified from their spot. So they're going to be contesting each other again as well. Peterbot and Byla are now going to at least only have one team contesting them for the Mythic POI. Obviously, if Booger didn't qualify, his team would be there also. So very lucky for Peterbot and Byla that Booger and Threats clutched it up in the last game. Yanis and Rezon are so incredibly lucky. One of the best teams to be playing out of last chance major. And they had two teams contesting their split. And like I said, Teeny's team and Barker's team managed to both qualify. So Yanis and Rezon now get their split uncontested, which is extremely surprising. Cooper Mero, who unfortunately struggled uncontested day one, are uncontested again on day two. So hopefully they can pull it together. Oka's playing as a solo, obviously was not able to qualify. He is now being double landed on by Noxy, Crisp, and Kaizen, and Clement. So hopefully he can do something. He managed to get almost 20 points as a solo on day one, which is already extremely impressive. Now that Kami and Seti have qualified, Pam Stu and Thatcher are also going to be trying to drop at Frenzy. They will be going up against Stain and Datus, who were contesting Kami and Seti day one and couldn't pull it together. Across the board, day two is looking ridiculous. If you want to follow any of the action, I'll be live the entire day on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Antics. Tune in, V-Bug giveaways, gifted subs, giving away dig merch, bunch of cool stuff, bringing the vibes. Don't miss it.